Hi, everyone. Um, if you are in this live, welcome. Um, I'm not able to see the live screen. I think I'll need to pull up another device um, to be able um, to see that. Um, on the line here, we have Ms. Jackie Arnold, um, who is the Director of Strategic Relationships at Sailor Academy. Um, and Sailor Academy is a nonprofit org that um, basically offers free online courses, um, which leads to um, you know, increase and enhance um, career skills and um, in some cases, college credits. Um, Ms. Arnold has also written and spoken um, on educational access for as Evolution Ra uh, Magazine, um, ACCRAO, and the Maryland chapter of the NAACP. Um, also on the line, we do have our wonderful leader, Ms. Kimberly Rice, um, as well. So um, Kimberly's going to kind of take over moderating um, with uh, Ms. Arnold today. Hey everyone, how are you? I am not gonna say a lot today. I'm gonna let Ms. Arnold kind of do all of that and let her kind of lead us down this path. But I am here just in case we all were wondering, I'm here. Wonderful. So Thank whenever you. you are ready to get started, we can go. Sure, sorry, and I, I jumped the gun a little bit. Uh, too much, uh, too many energy drinks this morning. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you um, both Kim and Shania for um, having me today. Uh, very lo much looking forward to chatting with the um, Black Global Career Network and talking about um, bridging skills gaps for Black Americans. And so I do have some um, slides I'll share with you all quickly. Um, I just wanted to give an overview of what's going on. And I'm sure uh, many of you are, you know, kind of very aware of what is happening in the world of uh, work and how things are changing, uh, but also give some uh, um, suggestions on how we can best address that. So hopefully you all can see my um, slides at this time. Um, just as an overview of what is going on, um, African Americans and really everyone, um, many jobs are in kind of under the threat of automation. So there are probably three key um, things that we need to look at. Um, one, um, as many of you know, I'm, I'm a member of the group, so I've seen a lot of the conversations going on. Um, we all know that African Americans usually controlling for the same job, same occupation, experience, education are not um, paid equally. So that's an economic threat that we face. Second, um, educational attainment is still something that's kind of under siege for us as a community. Um, third, which I think is really key to look at, um, and this may not be as relevant for um, many of the group, I see that many of you are, are professionals in white collar positions, but you may have family who are not. Um, and those jobs are also under high threat of automation. Um, so the top jobs, if you look at this slide, the top jobs that are under threat of automation, um, customer service, retail, fast food, those are also jobs where um, African Americans are overrepresented. Um, and particularly when you control for, and this graphic has a lot going on with it, particularly when you control for educational attainment, um, we uh, really become under threat of being uh, displaced due to automation. Um, and that has, I really observed that accelerating due to the pandemic. Um, you may have gone into a grocery store, into um, a drugstore and seen uh, the kind of automatic cashiering machines. Well, those are workers that are now displaced. Instead of having four or five cashiers, there are four or five stations, and then maybe it's run by one person who's overseeing it and who's really kind of a support role. Um, so how do, I've been doing a lot of thinking about how do we, um, educate ourselves and really um, skill ourselves to prepare for a new, um, not only a post-pandemic 
economy, but also the economy that was heading uh, toward us anyway due to automation and the advent of artificial intelligence. Um, as I mentioned before, education, uh, educational attainment is really key. Um, so there are about a quarter of African Americans who have a bachelor's degree or advanced degree, um, which isn't as far from the national average as um, some may think. So um, national average is about a third of the population has a bachelor's degree or higher. Um, the population that has um, some college, no degree is about a fifth and about a third of African-American adults have high school diploma um, and no college. Um, and so the populations that are really going to be vulnerable to um, job displacement, both due to the uh, pandemic and due to automation are going to be um, primarily those folks who have a high school diploma and no college. Um, no college and no, that also includes no um, certification or credential or anything like that. And then those that don't have high school. So again, um, those of you that have uh, friends or family members who are in the, these positions uh, want to encourage those folks and really think about ways that um, they can reskill. And it doesn't necessarily always mean um, going back uh, to school. There are other resources out there, and I'll talk about one. Um, uh, Reskilling so that they can get into those jobs that not only are kind of at risk, get out of those jobs that not only are at risk for automation, but they also tend to be um, lower paying, not necessarily livable wage jobs, um, physically taxing jobs. Um, and really get into the uh, knowledge economy where they would be more insulated. So, um, so we looked at what the jobs are and what the educational requirements are uh, or what the educational snapshot is um, for where we are now, what is going on in the future? So um, I've done a little bit of research of where some uh, potential jobs of the future are. And you can look um, online. Uh, McKinsey has a lot of great resources. I have some that I've uh, cited in this presentation, um, as well as there's an organization called Jobs for the Future. Um, that's great literature to look at as well. Um, but here are a few titles that may come up uh, when we're looking at the future and talking about uh, you know, what's going to happen in the next 10 years. So by 2030, you may see people who uh, need to be data detectives. So not just data analytics um, per se, but you need to um, have some background in problem solving and investigative analysis. Um, ethical sourcing manager, um, as we look at companies um, and evaluate their environmental footprint um, more, um, they will need support in making sure that their the resources that they use are fair trade, um, are sustainable, and they will need support to do that. Um, elderly care is going to continue to be a growing field. All the health fields are going to continue to be a growing field. Um, IT services broker, um, more and more companies, particularly more and more entrepreneurs are going to um, need more and more sophisticated um, information services to catch up. AI is uh, going to be a big thing. Um, UX and that's user experience design. So that goes a little bit beyond web design, but anytime you use an app or Facebook or Zoom are good examples. Um, there's someone working behind the scenes to um, make sure that from a user perspective, your app is easy and intuitive to use. Um, 3D printing um, engineer, um, that might be something uh, that's uh, a, the kind of the new wave of manufacturing uh, will be smaller scale, uh, a lot of people are predicting. Um, and also space pilot, which I thought was kind of fun, so I threw that in. That particularly if um, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk get their way, there will be a lot of people going into space. Uh, so that's a career field that you could look at as well. 
And so this is not the slide that I wanted to show quite yet, um, but I'll, oh, no, it is. There we go. So uh, just keep those future um, positions in mind because I'll come back to that in just a second. Uh, but I wanted to introduce Sailor Academy and why I think that this would be a good opportunity um, for um, this group and also any family members and uh, connections that you'd uh, like to help um, as they develop their career. Um, we are a nonprofit. Um, all of our courses are free, uh, meaning that you could go onto the site right now. Um, you could take a course like Leadership and Teams, which is only a few hours. Um, all the study materials are included within the course. You have access to exams. Once you finish the course, you earn a certificate that you can add to your LinkedIn profile. And all of that is available for free. Um, why would we do that? That sounds like an awful business model, right? Um, that is a question that I get all the time. Um, we are a fully funded nonprofit. We're very fortunate to be in that position. Uh, we were uh, founded by Michael Saylor, who if you follow cryptocurrency, you may uh, recognize him as a voice in that arena. But he's also the um, CEO, chairman, and president of MicroStrategy, which is a business analytics firm in the DC area. Um, and so uh, Michael Saylor's backstory is that he was able to go to MIT on a full ride ROTC scholarship. Um, and because of that, he graduated from MIT with uh, two degrees with no debt. So very shortly after he came out of school in his twenties, he was able to make a leap to entrepreneurship. And because he didn't have student loan debt, um, he felt more comfortable taking that chance. Um, so since he was able to benefit from a free education, he wanted to use technology, which is his background, um, to make free pathways to education available for people worldwide. And so we serve um, many learners all over the world. We genuinely have students all over the world, um, particularly in the US, we're able to offer uh, pathways to college credit. Um, so very recently, we were able to um, finalize our collaboration with Morgan State University, which I'm very excited about. Um, and also have uh, partnered with uh, universities, uh, particularly that serve adult um, learners. So those who are uh, looking to maybe go back to school um, and need a flexible way to do that. So such as UMGC and Southern New Hampshire University, um, uh, Purdue Global University. Um, we partner with almost 40 institutions that accept our courses for credit. Um, but today we're really focusing on skill development. Uh, so I did want to let you know that the skill development pathway is um, completely free and offers you a way to bolster your portfolio for free. Um, you all may be more familiar with um, some of the massive open online uh, course providers such as um, Coursera or edX. And we were founded around the same time. Um, where we're different is um, some of those platforms have like a set enrollment and, and set progression period for courses. We don't have that. Our courses are asynchronous. And what that means is that they're completely self-paced. Um, you're able to take the course, um, any course of any length on your schedule. If you only need a week to complete it, awesome. You'll be complete. You'll be done in a week once you pass your exam. Um, if you need to take a month to do so, um, that's certainly fine. Take your month, take your notes, take your time, um, and then you'll have that certificate after. Um, the college credit I did want to mention because um, for those of you who have family members who are either looking to get back into school or in school, um, you can use our resources um, to do what's called credit by exam. And credit by exam is what some students use to uh, save money on their degree program. Um, so say you've been a communications professional for 15 years and part of your degree plan says that you should take communications 101. Obviously, if you were to do that, that's probably going to be a waste of your time. So usually what your university will have is an option for you to be able to 
test out of a course in some way. Um, usually they're called challenge exams. Mm -hmm. CLEP is another provider that does this, um, as well as um, some other providers. Um, and we are a part of that uh, vertical of providers that allows you a way to earn credit without being in the seat at school. And so some universities vary on how many credits that they will take. Um, but if you look into your academic catalog, you will find that you can transfer some credits in um, through us and providers like us. So I did want to mention that um, everybody wants to save a little bit of money on their degree program um, or have an opportunity to learn skills. And so you may recall that list of professions that were of the future that we were talking about earlier. I just wanted to show some sample courses that might line up to that. So I can't help you become a space pilot, um, but uh, we do have um, courses that line up with a lot of these um, pathways. And so I wanted to just quickly show you um, some of the skills that might be useful um, to you as you're looking at, you know, how is your career going to fare in the future? And if you're curious about your profession in particular, um, look at places such as the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, they have great information about the um, growth and um, uh, decline of certain industries. Um, LinkedIn puts out a skills report um, I think yearly, uh, maybe even more often than yearly, depending on the region, they, they'll even do something that's a little more uh, region specific. Um, and just kind of always look to see what's out there. One of the things that I like to do, and I've told um, uh, my team when I'm working with the team to do as well, is you should always kind of look at your industry, look at job descriptions that are kind of one job up from where you are and see how those skills match up with your current skill set. What software is this, you know, pick out a dream company. What software do they want your role or your next role up to use? Is there a CRM that you could be using? Are they using, which is a um, customer relationship management program? Um, do they use Salesforce? And then look at free opportunities to learn those skills. So we're just one in this um, very large industry of um, free or lower cost ways to expand your skill set. And the more skills that you have, um, the more flexible you're going to be as industries change. And every industry just about is going to get some change that um, is um, enabled by technology in some way. Um, so this is something that you definitely want to look out for. Um, so other courses that we have include uh, short courses, professional development courses in leadership, um, organizational behavior. Um, if you are um, trying to help your company along to, to get kind of a diversity training program going, we have a short course on organizational culture and diversity, um, writing a conflict resolution program, but none of us work at places that need conflict resolution programs, so we probably don't need that. I'm, I'm uh, being facetious there. Um, decision making is only two hours, um, strategic management, human resource management, and regardless of the length of any particular course, you can earn a certificate from that course if you're not looking for a degree program. If you are looking for a degree program, I'd encourage you to look at um, our partners page. And I'll add the link into the chat as well. Um, and look at some of the partner schools that we have um, and some of the programs that are available. Um, I'm really excited to see schools like Morgan State University, um, uh, Morehouse also recently participated in this and um, the United, United Negro College Fund is spearheading a program um, where they are um, inviting students to um, come back, students that have some college, no degree to re-enroll into HBCUs. I think that's really going to be 
um, a game changer uh, in terms of the educational attainment that I was mentioning before. Um, and it's generational, right? So if you, um, you or your loved ones are able to earn that degree, there's a higher chance that your um, children will um, earn more, earn degrees, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, there's a lot of um, talk in social media about breaking generational curses. This is a way to do that. This is a way to do that. And there's funding available and it's not as expensive as you think it is um, to go back to school if that's something that you're um, interested in. So certainly um, contact me if you are and I'm, I'm happy to um, offer some guidance or even do another session on that. And this is a, a quote from one of our students who is actually outside of the US, um, who is able to use our courses and partner with one of our partners um, who specializes in distance education. The school is called Thomas Edison State University um, to earn his degree while he was in India. Um, so there's opportunity out there. We're so lucky that we've been able to help um, students even outside of the US. Um, I'm really excited to be able to talk with you all um, and learn what your um, interests are in terms of, of your educational goals. Um, but the resources are out there. Just there's a there's a way. All it takes is the will to do it. Um, and just wanted to mention um, that we. We work with universities, we work with nonprofits. So again, very excited to be able to collaborate with the Black Global Career Network today. Um, we've also done some work with um, government agencies um, who are looking at ways to uh, develop the skills of their uh, populations, their constituencies. Um, so again, when we talk about working with someone or partnering with someone, it, that is a completely um, free collaboration. Um, we don't charge for anything. We're able to really focus our resources on creating great content, um, which we work with uh, university professors to develop um, before publishing um, and focus on great partnerships, um, such as this work with uh, the Black Global Career Network. And again, these are my resources. Um, I think what I might do, Kim, is uh, provide a PDF of the slideshow. Um, and I've also recorded the session um, so that it could be put up as an additional resource for everyone. That'll be perfect. And how could, how do people, how could people get in touch with you if they want to like learn a little more or, need a little bit more support or a little bit more guidance? Absolutely. Um, so getting in touch with me personally, I put my um, email address on this last slide here. Um, you can also reach out to me on um, LinkedIn. Um, if you are in a course and you feel like you're having um, some trouble, um, you can uh, send a note to the contact email address. I'll, put that in the, I'll pop that in the chat. That goes out to all leadership. So I'm on that email, um, email chain. Um, all the directors of the organization are on that email chain so that we can respond as well as our student affairs team um, so that we can respond to you um, quickly. Um, and actually, if we have time, I'd love to show you all a course um, just so that you could get um, a feeling for uh, what you would be in for. Yeah, Jackie, we have plenty of time. We um, kind of have this scheduled out um, until 1230. So you can take all the time you need. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. I, I promise I won't, I won't take too, too much of the time since, since you guys have been hearing me talk <laughs> um, pretty much nonstop. So I'm doing a quick uh, screen share, and this is the Sailor Academy homepage. I'll log in as a student, and creating an account is name, email address, and password, basically. Um, 
or you can even use Google or Facebook to create an account. And so it's even easier than that. Um, it's very simple to use um, interface once you get in it. Um, and I'll log in just to show, to show you how, um, how it can be used. And so you'll see here, I'm a sample student. I think in terms of career skills, I'm going to pick on project management, which I think is an awesome, um, awesome skill to have regardless of um, the industry that you're in, very necessary skill. And so you'll see that when, um, when you go into the course, you'll see that there's a time advisory. And of course, as I said before, these are self-paced courses. So say you have some experience in project management and there are some of these modules that you're very familiar with. Say you're really familiar with organizational design. You've done work on that for years. Um, you're probably going to go through that section a lot more quickly um, than someone who's not familiar. Um, you'll see that this is a college credit recommended course. And, and since we have some time, I'll, I'll go into what that process means um, a little bit later on. Uh, but you can also earn a free certificate. Um, and I do think this is really a necessary skill to be familiar with, um, particularly as a lot of people, um, as our work has gone more remote or might be more Hopefully work environments will continue to be more flexible, but I know that for the federal government, for example, there's a big push um, to uh, move federal government workers back into um, federal um, office buildings uh, by September. Um, I'm based in the DC area. So that's, you know, for us, that's, that's pretty big news. And if you're in the federal government, that's probably, and have been working remotely, that's probably pretty big news as well. Um, so you'll need to have um, a grip on uh, project management, particularly as you consider people might be working more flexible schedules, you might be working with people across time zones, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so in each course, I mentioned that there's, there's nothing to buy in the course. Um, and I wanna show you what I mean by that. Within each unit, um, all the readings that you'll need as the course has um, a textbook. We use a digital textbook that's linked to within the course. Um, there will be articles, there will be videos, there will be activities. These are all available within the course. Um, so this resource is a video resource. The next one is looks like that's going to be a reading article. So you see there's a short article there. Um, we even have a mobile app um, where you'd be able to access um, these resources if say, you know, you or a family member did not have a computer available at that time or you're on the train, not driving, don't do this and drive. <laughs> but if you're on the train or, or flying or somewhere and wanted to do this to kind of keep you occupied, that's an option to be able to do as well. Um, and you'll see it's, it's very intuitive. So there are several ways that you can click to navigate through the course. Um, you can use this top menu here. Um, and uh, in some, some sectors, they call this a breadcrumb menu here. Um, you can navigate with the side menu here. or you can simply scroll down and click to expand here. At the end of each unit, there will be a short quiz that you can take to check your knowledge. Um, what we also like to do to um, help students be more successful in their exams is we provide a study guide. You can see the study guide is very detailed. So you can even use this as a study aid. Um, if this is something that you're taking for a training or 
um, or some other endeavor. I wanted to also make sure that I highlighted that professional development um, section of courses that I had been speaking about earlier. Um, these are courses that are designed to be very short um, professional development opportunities. Um, customer 104 is a little longer um, because we are working on making that a course that could be used for um, college credit attainment as well. Um, however, um, most of these courses, you'll see four hours, 12 hours, everyone could probably use a time and stress management um, refresher. Um, spreadsheets, if you or someone you know struggles with um, spreadsheet programs, uh, we have a few different levels of spreadsheet, um, spreadsheet knowledge for you. Um, preparing and delivering presentations. Um, let's, I can't really think of a um, industry that couldn't use that. Even if you're an entrepreneur, you need to be able to develop um, a presentation and um, so that you can earn funding, so that you can uh, win clients. Um, if you're in the nonprofit sector, writing grant proposals is something that's going to be um, important. If you're researching, um, resume writing is important for everyone. Um, but I really wanted to highlight many of these and, and Bitcoin for Everyone is a, a fun, um, fun course that we have put together. So if you're interested in cryptocurrency, you can even take that course. Um, but you can take any of these courses, as many of these courses as you want um, and use them as an opportunity to bolster um, your resume. Also, if you do so, um, please, uh, share that on social media. So if you share that on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and you tag us, we will then share um, your certificate um, with our network as well. Uh, and why you would want to do that is because you're, you know, you're boosting your visibility. So not only does your network and, and the people in your network, when they, you know, congratulate you or share, um, does that expand in terms of networking opportunities? But now you've, we have a platform where we're using that platform to boost your visibility further. We're sharing that to our network, which is global. Um, so uh, anytime you really have an opportunity like this, um, use it as an extra opportunity to promote yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. And you never know where your next opportunity is going to come from. And we know that a lot of job searches are um, very relational. So um, use that as an opportunity to kind of leverage us to promote you. Um, and um, just to show that you're a candidate that takes initiative, that's looking at your own lifelong learning and professional development as well. That's going to make you a more desirable candidate um, um, at the very least externally and um, really as just a, another opportunity to kind of look good as you are looking for um, your next either entrepreneurial venture or business opportunity. Any other questions? No, I, I think that was a pretty kind of in-depth um, thing. How what what's the been the success rate of like of parent of adults going back to school and getting their degrees at some of the HBCUs? Because you know that's a big kind of thing for us of like going back, finishing. Mm -hmm. um, how how are we seeing that play out in the long run? So this. My observation of this is that um, there have been some, it's dependent on the mission of the HBCU. So not every HBCU is the same. Some are focused on access, right? Um, mm -hmm. And some are very focused on, um, which they should, which obviously they should be. Most institutions are, are focused on, you know, prestige and really making sure that you have a, um, um, 
a great network of alumni that are, you know, going on to be Fulbright scholars and whatnot. Um, I'm not remembering the exact statistic, um, uh, statistics, but HBCUs, which we, which we unfortunately don't hear in the news, HBCUs are killing it in terms of the number of Fulbright scholars that they uh, recruit and um, that are accepted uh, by Fulbright, um, which I think is awesome. Um, I, my observation is that um, a lot of institutions have been, uh, and, and this has been across higher ed as well, a lot of institutions have been really focused on um, recruiting students who were college age, quote unquote, traditional college age. Um, mm -hmm. When the reality of who's going to school and what their, um, what their lives look like is the majority of students that are, are um, the majority of the pool of students that are available and the majority of students that are going to school would really fit into um, non-traditional. So non-traditional, um, the classic definition has meant um, if you work while you're going more than part-time while you're going to school, if you are a parent, if you're taking care of a relative, if you're over the age of 24 or 27, depends on who you ask, um, uh, if you support yourself, um, well, there are a lot of there are a lot more students that even that are in the eighteen to twenty four range that could fit any of those criteria. Um, uh, and higher ed has been really slow to embrace that. And I think um, before, because HBCUs are really focused on recruiting these great um, eighteen to twenty four year olds, um, that the not as many HBCUs. Um, had been embracing degree completion or um, getting some of those students that have not completed to come back and go to school. Um, uh, so I think that this is very new. I don't have I don't have data on that yet. Um, that's why the Morehouse and and Morgan State news um, made the splash that it did, um, and it's a space that I've been watching for a while. Um, because it hasn't happened quite at that scale. The, those haven't, the, these are new initiatives at these institutions. I hope that's, I'm not trying to dodge the question. I'm trying to answer it the best way I can. <laughs> no, I um, appreciate so, you. So we'll have to wait a few years to see. Um, what I'd love to see is, um, and I'm really excited about the um, United Negro College Fund initiative um, to enroll students. I'd love to see more of that happen. Um, but keep in mind that um, across all of higher ed, um, say four or five years ago, um, the notion that if you were a student and you didn't, if you, you know, dropped out, which is what we, which is what higher, what we're getting away from calling it, we're starting to call it stop out because um, we don't always know the reasons that students do this. Um, but the, the thinking behind it was, oh, you couldn't cut it. Oh, you didn't make it. And it's, and sometimes, well, you know, it could be the student ran out of money or a family member became sick or, um, or there was something else going on that they had to deal with, or they weren't ready. It doesn't necessarily mean they weren't academically ready. Of course, they were academically ready. They were, you know, applied and were screened before they came in. Um, but degree completion rates among African American students are lower than their counterparts. They're not as much lower as um, people would think that they are, but they are lower. Uh, we do tend to be more. Um, vulnerable to defaulting on student loans when we don't complete. And that's um, that's one of the reasons I kind of started out with um, talking about um, kind of the triple threat that we're under, right? So there's automation is um, a challenge that we'll have to look to the future to face. Um, the fact that we're not um, necessarily paid equally to our counterparts and other um, races, or if you're a woman, you're not necessarily paid equally to um, your male counterparts. Um, so take our negotiation class 
um, and then negotiate, always try to negotiate your um, job offer there. And then um, educational attainment is a challenge. Um, so if you're already coming from somewhere where, you know, you, you may need to take out more loans and then you um, take out loans um, to try to complete, I did a, uh, this is the part of the remarks that I did for the Maryland chapter of the NAACP, um, and you don't complete, those loans are still due. <laughs> you will still get a bill for those loans. So, so you have the um, kind of double whammy is what they call it. Um, and I love that, that's such a scientific term um, where uh, you are already in a job where you're paid less than you would be if you had a degree. Um, you're probably getting, not getting paid the market rate for that job. Um, then you've taken out more loans so you have a higher loan payment due. So you have these two pressures on the wages that you are getting. Um, and the best way to solve that is to really recruit, focus on those students and recruit them back into um, school. But how do you do that when I already have this loan bill due? Um, so I guess what I, I think is needed is um, outreach to those students and funding for those students um, so that they can really realize um, their full potential. But that was a little bit of a soapbox. I apologize. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that. I think that we, we, that's one of my big things is, you know, always thinking about all of the barriers, sometimes the false barriers to entry for us mm -hmm. um, that, you know, sometimes that degree is the difference between, you know, $10,000 more. And even though they're qualified, it's just a false barrier. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I definitely wanted to, um, to make sure that we discussed that. Is there any other questions? I know I'm asking a lot. No, I'm, I'm enjoying this. And actually, um, some, some hope is on the horizon um, where a lot of employers are starting to look at um, uh, really um, making an equivalent between um, a degree and experience, um, which is good uh, because you you they they are realizing that when you put a degree requirement, you are eliminating a lot of very qualified people of color who have the experience, um, who have the experience for that position and would probably do well, they just don't have that, um, they just don't have that credential quite yet. And yet if they were able to get into the job, they would probably have the capital that they need to get to um, go back to school and, and complete that credential. Um, but again, there, there are kind of other ways to get at it um, where you can develop your portfolio. So Sailor Academy is, um, a court, of course, uh, an opportunity. Um, there are other providers. So say you are in marketing and social media. Um, there is a company called HubSpot that has a free social media certificate that can just um you want to you want to make yourself as um as really as skilled as possible because you never know where the change or next opportunity is coming from um, google of course has its it certification uh certificate that coursera is offering and google is rolling out um, um a number of such certificates um there are other uh free skill providers. I would love that if you start with Sailor Academy first, um, but you, you can kind of search your field and free courses and see what comes up. Um, uh, you know, look at what the popular software is in your industry. So, so again, that's that um, guidance. And this is all my, <laughs> this is all my personal. So I just wanted to, um, my personal opinion, so I'm giving that caveat again. But um, when you have a chance to really just do a quick browse through um, companies that are like yours, positions that are like yours, positions that are one or two tiers up from your position, 
Um, and look at what software they're using. Look at what uh, certification they're asking for. If you're in hu human resources, um, does the next position up uh, require that you have a SHRM certificate? And that's a Society of Human Resources Management. Is there, um, is there a um, enterprise uh, resource program that your competitor is using? Mm -hmm. um, what if you wanted to make a move over to them? Would you want to have that cert certification? Does it make sense to learn how to code? There are all sorts of resources uh, to help you learn how to code for free as well. Um, so that's, uh, this isn't a TED Talk, so I can't say thanks for coming to my TED Talk, but uh, those are just some opportunities that I think um, uh, you should take advantage of. And not just you, um, if you're, uh, you know, young ones, if you have uh, students who are in K-12 who are crying about how bored they are, you know, you can watch three hours in Netflix, or you could have them take um, a course with us or any of those providers. And now they have a skill that they could use maybe to even make some money. You know how tech savvy um, people who are younger are. Um, so there's an opportunity for them as well, uh, just to have that, uh, just to have a little bit of an advantage. Um, and I think that is what they'll need to stand out, particularly as the economy continues to shift. That makes sense. Shanae, you have any questions? No, Kim, of course, as usual, you asked all the good ones. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that. Um, so what we'll do is if you um, want to make that, if you want to send the video over, we'll post it and the PDF, we'll post it. And sure. then, you know, we'll, we'll maybe we'll we'll start some conversation around this topic of like going back to school, Mm -hmm. um, or getting our kids ready for, you know, the automation, we'll start having those conversations and start using those resources a little bit more, because I think it is a, a truth is that mm -hmm. the, um, as we are seeing, when people don't want to work for peanuts, mm -hmm. um, companies want to figure out ways to get rid of the human factor. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and people are starting to, what's the word? They are starting to demand, you know, yep. actual wages and not, you know, beginner or starter wages. So um, mm -hmm. I think that this is a conversation that we need to continue to have. We need to, you know, start preparing for that in the long term. Um, and then this is going to be a little bit controversial some of us been coasting on that job that's, you know, because it's a good one. We need to move up so some other people can come in and get that that mid-level experience. Just yeah. saying. And, yeah. not, and not even that, like when you think about the fact that, you know, a lot of um, younger people are kind of foregoing college um, because of the cost and all of the baggage that kind of comes with that, you know, preparing, you know, parents preparing children to be, you know, ready for the workforce so that they can secure themselves some type of position, which would actually pay for the education that they want to attain. So, I mean, just kind of exploring that different pathway instead of straight to college, you know, you can work and go to college because, you know, one big thing that I think, you know, we're trying to drive, you know, in the group is that we're not on anyone's timeline. So, you know, just because someone does something in four years and it takes you seven, it doesn't mean that, you know, what you've done is any less than what someone else was able to do because they had that opportunity. Just, you know, it's just wonderful to have this so that people can kind of, you know, gain some different skills so that they can still support their dreams of, you know, getting that education, but without maybe incurring that, um, you know, that debt that they may have if they were to just go straight, you know, to college instead of straight into the workforce. Right. And I, I think also um, it's very hard, it's very hard to get guidance um, at that time. And if you think about um, 
And so my uh, niece, who's hopefully not watching, <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything bad about her. Um, my niece, who's very smart, she was a salutatorian in her high school, um, did not have um, college guidance. So she had to kind of pick for herself um, and didn't have guidance for, you know, here's how you get scholarships and, and, and blah, 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 Be because even though she was going to a college preparatory school, but because of the, um, but the resources in the metro area that she is in are lower. Um, and so having that guidance is really important for our kids because you know you can also sure you can work and go to school um what i'm what i'm seeing particularly from like i watch this space and particularly from my research for this presentation is that those jobs are one disappearing um and two the to the point that kimberly had made being crowded out um because if you say you're an older professional and you're displaced and you know those those jobs that maybe would have been entry point jobs for um uh folks my age or i'm not sure what age you wonderful ladies are um uh, but maybe um even five ten years ago um uh are also being crowded out by um other workers who are, since everyone's being displaced or has had their um, job disrupted in some way, those people who haven't been able to um, work from home, now there's a smaller pot and already younger people, the jobs that younger people normally would use as their starting point job, um, one, they're less, and then there are more people competing for them. Um, so, you know, it's how do we make sure that our young folks um have or anybody really um have a plan so um i don't think we talk enough about um there are uh vocations you could go into vocational training where you would earn a very good wage and you wouldn't have to go to school for a very long time so um uh, a mechanic for example um working in um, what they're calling advanced manufacturing where you're you're working with um, robotics to do uh, manufacturing assembly line type of jobs those are growing fields and there's a shortage of talent in those fields but that's not a that's not a job that you would hear about in high school certainly not something I think that I would have heard about if I wasn't already watching um, watching that space so sure, um, work, but you know, if you're if you're going to community college, which is awesome, community colleges um, are great entry points for students who want to save money on their um, degree program. You can get a certification. Look for programs with a certification. Um, look um, for fields that are growing. Um, we'll always, hopefully, we'll always need um, electricians and car mechanics. We'll need people who can do these advanced manufacturing jobs, um, get some sort of certification or licensure just so that you have um, something to help you along, something that you can use to command a higher salary. Well, I feel like this was super, super helpful and I appreciate you. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to see if we can schedule something you know, maybe again, like this isn't a topic that needs to go away. So I'd like to look sure, at something absolutely. maybe as, you know, the kids are back in school so that we can start looking at preparing them like for our, ju our juniors and our seniors. And as parents are like getting their kids back into the new normal of going back into school. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, maybe around September, October frame, if we okay. could revisit this topic and, and look at it from a different perspective, I think that'd be super, super helpful. What do you think, okay. Shanae? I think she's still on mute. But Sorry, yeah, I was on mute. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I actually agree. Um, I think that, you know, we do have a lot of parents and we get a lot of questions. You know, my 
my young adult son or, you know, my senior. Um, so I think it would actually be good to try to focus on that demographic of, you know, our, because I know that a lot of, there are probably not a lot of seniors and juniors in our group, but the parents of those students um, so that they have some guidance on what to do because, you know, it's a big crossroad. So it, it's a lot of responsibility for a parent to have to help guide their child in the right direction, you know, and kind of start having those conversations. So I think that would be a perfect time kind of when school gets back in and, you know, the college applications and all that stuff is kind of on the top of people's minds or what they're going to be doing, you know, in the next six to nine months once school is over. I'd love to participate. Um, and um, I can even, I'll find out if I can recruit um, a colleague maybe who's like a registrar at a university to participate too. And maybe they can talk about what, what universities are looking for. I love it. Let me, let me take notes because I'm really bad about forgetting. So let me take notes. Uh, Mel and Sinead keep me on point. So yeah, I absolutely love this. Um, and we'll, we'll definitely are going to post this in the group as well as links to those resources. Because um, I think it's super, super important that we, um, we don't get caught with our pants down again. You know, we don't get caught the next pandemic or whatever is around the corner and we don't want to get caught unawares again. Um, yes, and um, if you're interested in more information on this uh, space, I, as I said, I linked some resources, but um, take a look at what um, Brookings is talking about in terms of, um, and this was, like I said, this was something that was, automation was kind of already coming for many of these positions before the pandemic, but um, many businesses felt that in order for them to stay in business, this was kind of um, one of those events where, you know, kind of the evolution of this jumped a couple of steps and it really grew exponentially where businesses at the very least are figuring out are kind of tinkering around with how much staff do they really need to be um, operationally vi viable? What's, what's that minimal number? Um, and you know, for some businesses that helps them stay in business, for some businesses it's helping them um, become even more profitable, but what, what that translates to is less people, is fewer people have jobs. Um, and there's been a, a more than one piece of literature about how vulnerable um, Black people are to that. Um, many of those top jobs that I had in that um, third slide um, were overrepresented in. Um, and um, uh, the Latinx community is kind of in a similar position um, where there's uh, going to need to be some work done in terms of making sure they're not uh, vulnerable to displacement as well. Um, and that we can get into the jobs that will become available um, as that process occurs. Makes sense, makes sense. This is, this is excellent information. Thank you so much for uh, reaching out. Um, I would love if you, I, I don't see you posting a lot. But, oh, I just joined. I just joined okay. the group after um, Merlene contacted me. Um, okay. But I, I will um, post and get into the discussion. Um, yeah, but, I think know. that would be really, really great. Our people, they have those long memories like elephants and they look for the people who are their go to people. So mm -hmm. um, I think that that would be super, super helpful. And is there anything that we can do to kind of help your organization? Um, sure. If you have um, a resource page um, or if I can reach out to, so I uh, do webinars on behalf of, of Sailor Academy as well. So perhaps there's an event that we could do together. Um, if you have somewhere where you list professional development resources uh, where we could be linked to, again, there's no cost to do this it's you're, you are paying with your time it, and it does require effort, 
Um, for the college credit, of course, um, there's not a cost from us um, for, and we can, you know, do a separate presentation that's solely on college credit as well. Um, for those who have, um, who are interested in going back to school or have um, kids that they're looking at, you know, what are your college options? Um, uh, but there is what we call a proctoring fee that does not go to us. Um, we work with uh, proctoring you, and we're actually looking at another proctor provider that can do um, a proctor, and that's that means they have to verify your ID, similar to what you would have done for the SATs or ACT, um, and that would be five dollars an exam. But for five dollars an exam, imagine you're transferring in um, a course that's saving you twelve to fifteen hundred dollars. You know, wow. three hundred dollars a credit, it would be. Uh, 900 for a three credit course, 1200 for a four credit course. Um, and that could, that could be the difference between someone um, leaving because they need to work for a couple of um, semesters to get the money for tuition or being able to stay um, in a program and complete. Got it. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Well, I really, really appreciate you. And I, we did, I think we did got a lot of great information. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really excited about this. Wonderful. I am as well. Um, thanks so much uh, for having me. Um, I'm not sure if Merlene is on, but thanks so much to her for reaching out. Um, really excited to get to know you all um, and to talk more about this um, subject. It's so, it's so important. And I, um, I see a lot of research being done on it. I'm not sure what's being, um, maybe it'd be great to get a policy person on and find out what's being done policy-wise, but usually what ends up happening is um, particularly for our community, we kind of end up having to make a way for ourselves. So how do we get ahead of it this time? Um, and, um, you know, get all of these brilliant minds that we have together uh, to really, uh, make sure that um, we're able to participate in the new economy as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I am going to let you go. Um, I would love to get that. Once you get the video up, we'll go ahead and um, post that recording. Okay. Um, and then we'll, we'll definitely follow up so that we can continue this conversation. And, and you've given me a lot to think about. Like I'm always thinking on new ways to engage our people and you like literally gave me a lot to think about of like what how do we help move to the next step excellent excellent awesome. um i would love to continue um continue the conversation so uh yes we're all on an email chain um and look forward to hearing from you soon and i'll send perfect that thank you so much everybody. thanks so thank much for you. having me thank you kim thank, thank you, you. Janae. have a thanks. good day all right bye everyone Bye -bye. Bye -bye. And thank you for the, those who are participating on Zoom. Thank you for uh, joining us today.